Hello everybody. Uh, so the first time I showed you guys how to um, do sprite animations with your sprite sheet, um, it wasn't very fluent. The animation wasn't really that great. And I told you I was going to show you better ways to improve it. Well, since C++ is an object-oriented language, then might as well use classes to make our jobs easier. So if you haven't learned about classes, then I suggest you learn about classes, then come back to this tutorial. But if you know about classes, then you'll be just fine. We're using like the most basic um, concepts of classes. Basically, we're just using classes and functions within the classes and variables as well. <laughs> So, um, also in this, um, the in our in my last tutorial, um, of the sprite sheet, the volume and stuff was boosted, and you could hear fuzziness in the background. So I'm not gonna be doing that. So hopefully the volume is good on this video. Um, and the quality is better. So anyways, to begin, we're gonna be including, uh, SFML graphics.hpp and we need to initialize all the basic stuff at first so we need to have our main function and we need to put return 0 so we need to create our render window and we're gonna name it window with SF video mode and we should make some defines for screen width and screen height. In case more than one thing needs to manipulate it, then we can we just have to change the value up here and it will change it throughout the whole program. So we have our screen width and screen height. So screen width, screen height, and we'll set this to 32. And we'll It'll make this coding made easy sprite sheet so we got that down we got our window so now we have to make our actual game loop so we do this by doing window dot is opened sorry and then we have to make our event loop so we do that by doing SF event we're gonna name our event event and window dot get event and I'm going through this fast because you should already um, understand this so if event dot type because I already went through it before SF event closed or event dot key dot code equals SF key escape then we just want to close the window. So if they close the if they close the window with the X button or they press the escape key, then the window will close. So that's it. This is our, our um, game loop and our event loop. So now that we got that down, we want to create some classes. So in code blocks, we're going to go up to File, go to New, sorry, and Class. And the first class we're going to be creating is an animation class. And I'll explain the purpose of these classes uh, in a minute. So we create an animation class. And then we want to make a player class as well. So new. Oh man. Oh. New class. And we're going to name it player. Generally, classes have capital letters for the first letter of the name, so make that uppercase. And you don't want a virtual destructor, so yeah. So once we do that, we have an animation class and a player class. So our animation class is going to handle our sprite sheet animation, such as scrolling through the sprite sheet to show the different frames and it's going to handle drawing the frames to the screen so what our player class is going to do is handle the player's input and loading the player image etc etc now you may be asking why do I set it up like this well say we have an enemy class and the enemies are from sprite sheets too and we want the enemy sprite sheet to animate then we can derive um, 
the animation settings into and we can put it into the actual enemy class so instead of copying and pasting the code from the player the animation code from the player and put it into the enemy class we could just have an animation class that will handle all animation throughout our whole program and that's essentially what object oriented program is it's taking out repeated re re um, reoccurring code and using o utilizing only once throughout the whole program to make it more efficient so uh, let us look at our animation.h so we're gonna it's gonna consist of three functions we're gonna have an initialize function uh, it's gonna have a update function and then the parameters is gonna be a render window and we have to put an ampersand uh, window making it that it's a reference to the actual game window and we need a window for drawing and the reason why we need it for updating is so that we can get the window dot get frame time so then we can move the player or animate the player at a particular rate and for the draw we need it so that we can actually draw our character to the screen and since we're using these uh, properties then we have to include sfml slash graphics dot hpp so we're gonna copy this right here and we're gonna paste it at the top and for the player class it's gonna have similar functions except for one added one so we're gonna have an initialize the added one is load content the next one is update with the same parameters ampersand window and draw render window ampersand window so why do I have load content in there well uh, we could easily load the content in the initialize a uh, function but ever since working with XNA C sharp and XNA they have a function that has that's called load content that handles all the content you need to load so I'm thinking that it, it it's for reader readability and for ease of use and to separate your code in the certain sections we ha we set it this way so the initialize method is going to initialize at the player's position the amount of frames etc etc load content is actually going to load the player image and anything else we need to load and then for the update that's going to update the player's position update the frames etc and draw is going to draw everything to the screen okay simple enough so in the private section we need to actually get an image that we want to draw so uh, that's going to be a player image that that's going to be the sprite sheet that we load and uh, we're going to need a frame counter switch frame we need another variable called switch frame we need our x and y and some of you might be saying why not use vector twos well I haven't taught that yet so I'm not going to be using something else I haven't taught I'm going to teach that after these set of tutorials so we have x and y we need our f current frame x current frame y and we could use vector twos for this as well if you don't know what vector twos are then don't worry about it it basically stores x and y values into one variable rather than holding it into two different variables uh, and if you want to if you don't know vector twos and you wanna like hold a position into like an array you could do position and have it uh, have it have two elements in the array so that means position 0 will represent the x position and position 1 will represent the y position but we're not going to make it complicated, we're just going to have x and y right now. I did it that method, the other method, the complicated method in our, my Allegro HD series, and some people are confused by it, so I'm not going to try and confuse you guys. So right now, we're just uh, creating our, our functions within our player.cpp. So that's load content, we need player update sf render window and window 
And last but not least, we have our draw and SF render window and window. So that is simple enough. Let me check how much time I have. So uh, last but not least, what we're going to do for the animation.cpp is do the same thing. So uh, animation initialize. And we're going to do the same thing for update, void animation, update, SF render window, and window. And last but not least, void animation, SF render window. And for those of you guys who have uh, seen my game development videos, if you guys haven't seen that, then you guys, I really think you guys should watch it. It's me making a development, uh, me creating my own game and showing you the development of my game. And the first two videos are based on the menu system. Now, on the first video, my menu system is animated and stuff, but... It got a bit overwhelming because I was repeating the animation code for each particular menu I created. So what I did is that I, in the second video, I created an animation class that would handle all the menu's animations, as well as that will actually uh, control the player's sprite sheet animations and etc. Any type of animation I have in my program. So what the an the animation class handles all the menu's animation. The menu class actually handles controlling, uh, handles setting what menu items are on each page and what each menu item does. If it does zooming, if it does sliding, if it should, uh, if you should show only particular menu items, etc., etc. So the menu class handles everything that has to do with menus, and then my screen classes handle what should be drawn to the screen on certain times. So I know that sounds a bit complicated, but just giving you the gist of what we're doing right now. So the animation class is going to handle animation. The player class handles the actual player and the controlling the player. So this is um, this is it for this tutorial. Next tutorial will be coming up shortly, and we will be continuing this tutorial series. So thanks for watching, and bye.